Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. So today we are going to be doing another author backlist ranking video. Y'all have been asking for more of these in my comments like all the time. So I am giving them to you. And today we're going to be rating and ranking every single thriller by Robin Harding. And I always used to think of Robin Harding as like not my favorite thriller author. I don't know. I just never saw her as like super great. Her thrillers were average. I would always pick up her new releases, stuff like that. And when I was going back and looking at my ratings of all of her books, I realized I actually freaking love Robin Harding. I think she's a great thriller author. I've given none of her books below a four star. If you like domestic thrillers, bougie, rich, white people, suburban drama, this is the place for you. This is the author for you. You need to read all these books because I'm telling you, I love that kind of stuff and I love these thrillers. It's like they're just so addicting. You start reading and you just can't stop. It sucks you in. You want to know about everybody's secrets. That's like a huge theme in all of Robin Harding's thrillers is like secrets in suburbia and like the neighbors are talking and like all of that, like the paranoia, suburban paranoia is like such a thing. So if that sounds like something that you like in your thrillers, get ready because you're gonna like all of these. The first thing I'm gonna do is just go through every single book and tell you guys a synopsis and my rating, my thoughts, kind of just a little mini review. And then at the end, of course, the point of this video is I will rank them all for you from my least favorite to my most favorite. So I'm gonna start off talking about her newest release, which is The Perfect Family. This book follows a family, who would have thought? And it's a mom, a dad, a daughter, and a son, and they all have their own kind of like baggage, like hidden secret that they keep from the rest of the family. So when their house gets targeted with these kind of innocent seeming and then increasingly more malicious attacks, each of the family members thinks that it's because of them but obviously none of them are communicating with each other and we don't know who is actually doing these things to their house, to their family. And so the whole time we're trying to find out basically how each of the four secrets are going to be resolved. And there's a greater mystery of who is targeting them, why, and will they be successful in basically killing and torturing this family? I thought this book was so good. I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. It was so close to being a perfect 5 star read for me. It was just the very end that didn't like click with me. There were a few subplots that just didn't get perfectly resolved and the ending was a little ambiguous which is not my favorite thing in a thriller so it was a tad annoying to me. But other than that, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this book. All of the characters were so intriguing. It was action packed, fast paced. I cared about all of the drama. I was invested. It had me turning pages. Like if you're looking for a quick read that's gonna be addicting, this is a great option for you. Next, I'm gonna talk about The Party. And this was actually my first Robin Harding book I ever read. I read it, I think about a little over a year ago now. And I absolutely loved this book. At the time, I gave it five stars, but upon reflection, I think it's more like a 4.5. I used to be a lot more lenient with my ratings. And in the past, honestly, like eight to nine months, I've gotten pretty strict with my ratings. It's very, it's pretty rare that I give out a full five star, whereas every book that I really thoroughly enjoyed, I used to give five stars. So I did give this a five star. It's probably more like a 4.5, but that is no shame at all to this book. I mean, 4.5 out of five stars is like, 
a really high rating for me. I really enjoyed this book. It follows this little girl. She's about to turn 16 and she's having her sweet 16 party. She just has a couple friends over and of course they get into some nefarious activities. There's drinking, there's drugs, there's boys, you know, all of the wonderful things that teenage girls love to sneak around and do. And so this innocent slumber party quickly turns into something that just gets way out of hand and something happens at this party. And I don't wanna give it away, but basically there's an accident, something occurs, and this girl and her parents, her family become kind of like pariahs in the community. There's a lot of neighborhood drama. There's a lot of legal drama. If you like legal thrillers, I think you'll like this as well because there are like court things going back and forth and like people suing other people. There's legal drama in that sense. And it's the same kind of suburban, bougie, rich people feel. There's obviously a lot of secrets. And this one really reminded me of like a more trashy, <laughs> drama filled version of Little Fires Everywhere. If you like Little Fires Everywhere, I think you will love the party. I don't know what it is, just something about the family dynamics of Little Fires Everywhere really reminds me of the party and vice versa. So if you like one, I think you'll like the other. I gave Little Fires Everywhere five stars. So this was a very close second for me. And yeah, I just thought this book was great. Super entertaining, super fast paced. I read this one in a night. I read this one in a day. I think every single one of Robin Hardy's books I have completed in less than 24, if not less than 12 hours. They're just so fast paced and like page turning. Like you need to know what is happening. You need to know these people's secrets, or at least I do. So 4.5 stars for this one. Following the party, I read The Swap next, and I absolutely love this cover, I have to say. But this book follows a woman who is kind of like this Instagram influencer, it girl, big city queen, and then she moves out to the suburbs. And then she gets like into a controversy and her and her husband have to move out to the suburbs to escape and kind of restart their life. And when she moves out there, she just becomes a casual art teacher and one of her students is becoming obsessed with her where we don't know if she wants to kill her and be her. We don't know if she wants to have a relationship with her, if she wants to be intimate with her. We don't really know, but we're following the perspective of the it girl, of the obsessed student and of the it girl's like best friend in the neighborhood who is kind of slowly watching all of this devolve. And one evening, there is a partner swap. And I'm not gonna get into anything other than that because I don't wanna give anything away, no spoilers, obviously, but drama ensues. If you like obsession as a trope in your thrillers, I think you will definitely like this one. If you like kind of a sleepy suburban setting with a dark underbelly, you will definitely like this one. Uh, however, I did not think this one was as strong as the previous two books that I talked about. The characters weren't as interesting to me and the plot did get a little bit repetitive because it was like, okay, we get it. She's obsessed with her, she's obsessed with her. Like we get it, we get it. But it did have some crazy twists and reveals that I did not see coming. I especially liked the end of this book. So I ended up giving it four stars. However, I know a lot of people rated this really low because the back, the like description on the back makes it sounds like it's going to be all about this like couple swap that happens. And it's really only like one scene where they talk about it and then drama ensues afterwards. But I don't think it's very misleading. I wasn't expecting the whole book to be about that one night. Just like in the party, the party is the first scene of the book and then the rest of the book goes into the drama that follows. So kind of similar in that way. Um, if that annoys you, sorry, I guess don't read these. <laughs> Next, I'm going to talk about Her Pretty Face. And to me, this is the most underhyped book of Robin Harding's backlist. 
I haven't heard many people talk about it, but I absolutely freaking loved this book. Like I loved it. I read it in a day. I actually read it in a matter of hours. I think I literally just sat down and binged it like over four hours, but it was so good. And y'all, this one goes dark. If you're a fan of dark thrillers that feel like very true crime-esque, I think you will like this one. It follows a suburban rich white family yet again. Who's surprised? That is Robin Harding's Lane and she just stays in it. And it's kind of like a, a simple favor in a way. It really reminded me of A Simple Favor by Darcy Bell because the mother of the family makes friends with another mother in their little suburban neighborhood and their friendship quickly turns toxic. It's just a little bit too close. Uh, we don't know if there's like some weird sexual tension or what going on, but their relationship is a little bit uh, skewed away from like a normal female friendship. And of course, everyone in this book has secrets. There is so much drama and things devolve from there. I honestly think the writing in this book is some of the best domestic thriller writing I have ever read. I really just deeply cared about the characters and what was happening to them. The twists and reveals in this book were fantastic. It really felt like a true crime case. Like it felt like watching an episode of Dateline where it's like her smile lit up the room and now she's dead on the floor. <laughs> like it was very much like that for parts of it. And there's also a court case that we're following in this book. So there's drama, there's secrets, there's obsession, there's toxic friendship, there's court case, there's true crime elements. Like this book literally has everything. It's so dark. It is so riveting. Like it just kept my attention the entire time. So I super, super recommend Her Pretty Face. If you're going to read anything from this video, I would say pick this one up, especially if you're a fan of domestic thrillers like me, you will love this and I rated it a 4.75 out of five stars. Finally, the last thriller on Robin Harding's backlist is The Arrangement. And this book is set in New York. It follows an art student and she's obviously broke trying to live in New York and go to school. So she's kind of not making ends meet. Her roommates are demanding her to pay them back what she owes and she's really desperate for cash. So she ends up turning to a sugar baby website. And at first she says she's just going to go on a few dates with older men, collect her like $500 for the evening and move on. But she ends up getting really entrenched into a relationship with this one older guy and things devolve from there. There's murder, there's secrets, there's deception, there is obsession there's really everything like this book is so riveting i just keep turning pages just like all of the other robin harding books that i've talked about in this video it is so addicting like you just want to keep flipping pages and knowing what happens next these books all of them not just this one have really short chapters as well so it's just super easy to read and i also really liked our main character in this book I like the way that she was so positive about sex work, but she also talked about the other side of it that can bring a lot of shame and judgment. And I just thought the commentary about sex work and sugar baby, sugar daddy relationships was really interesting. Also, again, the twists at the end. <sighs> chef's kiss. I did not see those twists coming. This book also has a little bit of legal drama and a court case at the end. So, I mean, these books just really have everything that I'm looking for in a thriller. However, kind of like the swap, this one did get a little bit repetitive. Like they're going on sugar daddy, sugar baby dates. They're afraid of getting caught. She's anxious, but she's also living, but she's also shameful. Like it was just like the same kind of thing over and over, probably in the middle, like 50 pages. So I did end up rating this one a four out of five stars, just a little bit lower because it wasn't as page turning as the rest of Robin Harding's work. So now that you know all about all of Robin Harding's backlist, I'm gonna go ahead and rank them for you. And even though I'm gonna be ranking them, just know I love and recommend all of these books.
but my least favorite is the swap. Next is the arrangement. Above that is the perfect family. Then we have the party. And finally, my favorite book is Her Pretty Face. So there you go, guys. That is my definitive rating and ranking of Robin Harding's Thriller Backlist. She has a couple other books that are like weird early 2000s romance and then like I think a cozy mystery um, but I didn't include those in in this video because I like to keep these centered around backless thrillers that's kind of what you come for <laughs> on this channel so yeah thank you guys for watching this video I hope you got some good recommendations out of it if you did go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in my next one bye